Hello and welcome to Recyclist. I'm Eric Provost with Diamond Scientific and I'm being joined today by two incredibly special guests. First, the Executive Director CEO of the Solid Waste Association of North America, Amy Burke, as well as its Director of Public Policy, Kristen Oldendorf. Thank you two so much for joining me today. Thank you, Eric. We're excited to be here and share with you what's been going on and what we see for the future. Yeah, thank you for having us. Absolutely. No, thank you guys for, for coming in and spending some time and, and talking some some plastics here with Recyclists because uh, both of you recently attended uh, a really important meeting up in Ottawa in late April that I don't think most of the general public is kind of even aware of what's going on. And I'll, I'll kind of let you guys explain that. Yeah, sure. Eric, I'll start. Um, so I, I think you're right. And, uh, what happened up in Ottawa was the United Nations Environmental Program. So UNEP for short, Intergovernmental Negotiation Committee. So UNEP's INC and Ottawa was the fourth meeting. And what is this fourth meeting of? It was the fourth meeting to bring the countries in our world together to figure out how we can eliminate plastic pollution. And 170 countries came together to discuss what a treaty would look like, what would be the terms, um, you know, how would our world work together to work towards eliminating this plastic pollution that is affecting our marine environment, it's affecting um, even us as humans with microplastics. Yeah. So it was really exciting to be there and uh, be part of this because if the goal is that the uh, UNEP, INC4, will go to the next meeting, um, INC5, this year, and that there'll be a treaty signed by the end of this year. So if that happens, how is that going to impact what we represent? United States, Canada, Caribbean, and the Pacific Basin. Yeah, and it's really interesting because this, you know, with a, a lot of treaties and agreements, and especially when it comes to the UN, uh, I think a lot of people may be most familiar in this regard with something like the Paris Agreement, which was just that. It was an agreement, but this is meant to be a legally binding resolution, correct? Yes. And really interestingly, the the final, the the fifth session that you're talking about uh, taking place, I believe, December in Korea, um, when it comes to developing this treaty and, and these different meetings, um, what are kind of the, the, the individual goals for the, the individual sessions? Like, what is the process of getting this treaty, you know, formalized? So um, I was able to be one of the observers of the negotiation. So mm -hmm. not officially representing the United States or anything yeah. that, but I was yeah. an official observer of the treaty negotiation. So that enabled me to actually enter the building um, and hear and listen, talk to those that are working to negotiate this treaty. Um, I could monitor the country's positions, um, and I could see w how countries were, where their positioning was and what their thoughts were um, in terms of plastics, in terms of where SWANA can be a solution in terms of the waste management and the re resource management, the recycling part of that. And so it is a quite complex process, um, I guess, when you're bringing so many diverse perspectives together to make sure there is that equity and that voices are heard throughout uh, so each INC starts off with a general assembly, and um, from there it goes to break down into different working groups to really delve into the different topics. So even from uh, what type of plastic should we be manufacturing in our world to the end of life, you know, the waste management, the recycling, even the reuse, the repair, um, of, you know, of plastics. What does this all look like? And there's, of course, lots of um, meetings that happen. Um, it's over a week time, it being in Ottawa. And then there are um, sessions that will happen in between the next meeting that happens in Korea. Um, 
so I, you know, I, I got to observe and see, and I don't want to speak too much about what's going on, but from the observer perspective, it was really neat to see different countries grouping together, um, different countries, you know, making um, pleas for certain aspects that they feel very strongly for. Uh, and of course, certainly interesting to see where uh, Swana represents the United States Canada, Caribbean, and Guam, where they were falling in this whole hierarchy, this whole back and forth in terms of let's get this treaty done. And I think, you know, there's many opinions about this when we're going to put a legally binding agreement together. Um, we want to make sure it's going to move the needle and we want to make sure it looks to the future generations, uh, the world we're leaving, the environment, our communities, and that it doesn't get too watered down. Uh, with what we're doing. Um, so, you know, I think that's why there are so many meetings, because when you're bringing the diverse perspectives together, it just takes that long uh, to really get that forth. Yeah. And you touched on something there that I that I want to kind of open up a little bit more. Uh, you talk about how the, the treaty is meant to uh, really address the, the full life cycle of plastics. This is not just a plan to put them, this is not just an international recycling plan. This is meant to address even the manufacturing and distribution of plastics uh, from you know the factory stage. So, is it? You know, do you think there's a significant chance that following the the signing of this treaty, that we could see some significant changes across the country in terms of how our plastics are even made? Based on the negotiations, I'm not exactly sure, right, where mm -hmm. it's going to land. I do think that there could be changes. And I think that's why, you know, in addition to organizations like SWANA or the International Solid Waste Association, you also saw um, associations, trades, they're representing the manufacturers, right? In particular, the consumer packaged goods industry. Yeah, and yeah. Um, in addition to those trade associations being there, you also saw uh, the manufacturers having um, side events and meetings, right? Because they are the ones that are producing a product that is going into some plastic container. And so they want to make sure that their voice is heard and that if there are changes to um, what the polymers are, the chemical makeup of the plastics that they're using, or if it's on the other end of the spectrum that plastics can no longer be used, that affects their business. That affects their business model, how they present themselves, their brand, even the usability um, of the product uh, because it was has been built in plastic and if they have to change that. So, you know, I do think that there is a sense that, you know, we as, as the manufacturers, we're making these products, we're the beginning of life. We need to make sure we're part of this. And if there are going to be significant changes in terms of no more plastics, or we can only use this type of plastics, this type of um, polymers, then um, you know we need the time to be able to change our products, our manufacturing line, our equipment to build these new products. And so I do get a sense since there were so many represented there, and Kristen and I had multiple conversations with many of them that um, they see that it could go one way, right? It could be that drastic. They want to be ready for it. And they also want to make sure that, you know, they are representing their ESG goals and their sustainability goals and hitting that as well. And this is all going to play into it once this treaty is signed, how that trickles down, um, certainly at the beginning of life and at the end of end of life. And so it's really important for us as SWANA to make sure we're having those conversations about the products, um, the beginning of life, because we are the ones as an industry uh, handling that. And we want to handle that in the most sustainable way for the future generations and environments. Yeah, absolutely. Well said. Um, and you talked about you and uh, Kristen each having quite a few conversations with many of the people that were there. A lot of side events going on at this session. And I'm interested both for you and for Kristen, you know, what was you know, what was maybe some of the, the things that stood out to you from from those side events? And really, what was what was a lot of their purpose? Were they a lot of just manufacturers advertising their products or were there actually like lobbyists trying to trying to sway 
people's minds one way or another. Yeah, I think for me, this was the first time I'd you know attended an INC, so it was really interesting to see how many different types of stakeholders were there. You know, yeah, a lot of perspectives. Of, yeah, absolutely. So just that alone had so much value. Like, yes, there were probably lobbyists. There are also a lot of the brands, as Amy mentioned, a lot of nonprofit organizations. Really, just every stakeholder and every part of the value chain coming together. Um, and so there was a lot of just organic conversations happening. Um, you know, each of these uh, organizations were hosting and attending these different types of side events. Um, so that was interesting too, because, you know, there were a couple like kind of official side events, but most of them were just sort of unofficial, you know, organizations taking it on themselves, um, which we did as well, along with our partners, the International Solid Waste Association, um, which we're a member of, uh, to host a side event. So. That was, um, it was just really great to see all those organizations come together and attend and discuss these issues from different types of viewpoints. And it wasn't all, um, you know, everybody agreeing with everything, uh, you know, there was some healthy debate and conversations and that's really, it is what we need to move it forward. You know, you need to be able to have those conversations to understand how to find common ground. Um, so I think, you know, that it really did stand out to me just, you know, it wasn't, um, it, it was just like really unique. It wasn't a experience you'll get often um, to have such an international group and so many different types of um, I guess viewpoints coming together like that. Um, so yeah, we attended a few events hosted by um, you know different um, NGOs as well as different brands, um, kind of having a conversation around solutions, the role of policy, um, the role of just voluntary goals and collaboration. Um, and we can talk more, you know, about the event we hosted as well. And, uh, you know, some of the perspectives that came out of that. Yeah. I'd love to hear more about the event that you guys hosted and, and what, you know, what your intent, what your goal was with your side event, um, uh, at UNEP. Yeah, definitely. So our event was, um, titled breaking barriers, circular waste and resource management tackles plastic pollution. So a big part of the goal of this is really kind of raising awareness of the key role of our sector in being the solution to this problem. You know, a lot of conversations are happening around preventing plastic pollution, um, you know, having less plastic leakage, strengthening recycling systems, but, you know, it's, it's our members of, you know, our organizations that are the ones, you know, doing the work that are out there every day, um, you know, running recycling collection trucks and running recycling facilities and communicating to the public about what's recyclable. Um, so making sure that we are, you know, kind of representing our members in that way and making sure that these conversations reflect how important having good recycling infrastructure is and, you know, the role in the whole system. Um, so that was part of it, um, our, our goal for this and kind of thinking about how can we influence the negotiations in that way. Um, so, yeah, Amy gave some opening remarks um, along with the ISWA president. Um, and we had two different panel discussions, um, kind of each with a, a diff slightly different focus. Um, so the first one was around kind of more like circular business models and how, um, you know, we can kind of all work together to focus on reuse and repair and recycling and really kind of close the loop. Um, so Amy moderated that panel. Amy, do you want to say anything else about the, the panel you moderated? Yeah, sure. Um, I really love the panel, Eric, uh, because <laughs> it was bringing together like the full circle circularity and addressing uh, the beginning of life. We had um, a representative from Keurig Dr. Pepper Canada, um, the chief corporate affairs officer and sustainability officer, um, you know, talking about it. And then, you know, me being the facilitator, but also representing then the end of life of these products, right? And and what does that look like? Uh, we also touched on extended producer responsibility, EPR, and um, what are like different circular business models, right, that could work here. So not just thinking insular um, in terms of waste and resource management business model, and not just thinking of the manufacturer business model, but what is the full circle, how we could work together to help move towards eliminating the plastic pollution. Um, and uh, we were talking about reusing, we were talking about repurposing, recycling, um, 
the closing that loop on the resource consumption and waste generation. And we even got into a little bit about, you know, we are certainly representing um, and want to work towards ending plastic pollution, but how do you bring the consumer um, along with what we're trying to do um, and the change in behaviors um, that may be needed um, to in order to do this, right? Recognizing that uh, the manufacturers and us um, in terms of the recyclers are not able to do this alone. And when you think of the United States having so many juris different jurisdictions and different requirements on what can be recycled and what cannot be recycled, we really need to come together and create that circular loop in thinking about how we can move towards ending that plastic pollution. Yeah. And I'm specifically interested in one aspect of it because uh, th this may seem like a random question, but in the different sessions, are they specifically targeting individual parts of the treaty or are or is the entire treaty kind of open for discussion and reevaluation? Yes, great question. Um, so I, I didn't know myself. This was the first INC that I attended and uh, being a model United Nations uh, member throughout high school, I was very intrigued to see the process and quite frankly, relieved that our modeling was almost exactly what this is, what was happening. And um, it starts very broad. And then there are, were working groups, two working groups created, and then subgroups within those working groups to work on the different provisions within uh, the treaty. And so each day um, would be announced, you know, that this, the working group is working on provision one, this group is working on three, this is working on nine. And um, they would have up on the screen in the room, really the introductory text so that people could see the basis and the foundation for what uh, we were talking about. And, um, you know, the countries would put their name in to speak and address different aspects um, of the um, proposal in terms of the wording. So I did get to hear um, some related to actually um, uh, the fishing gear uh, that, and Kristen can speak more to this, but that is a big issue actually, that fishing gear um, is um, just found in the ocean, you know, it's just left or whatnot. Yeah. Um, I also heard the beginning of life about the polymers and how uh, we should not have plastics at all. They should be removed from our society. And, you know, other countries were saying, no, we need plastics. Um, you know, we need plastics, especially for um, medical supplies and medical care. And, and how is this going to be solved if plastics are removed? And then I did get to hear a little bit on uh, provision. I think it is nine related to the waste management, related to us um, yeah. and SWANA in terms of what we do. So they were working, started broadly, and then started getting into the details. And some of it, Eric, is wordsmithing or, you know, different definitions of words and what they mean. Right? I'm sure, so yeah. I think one in particular that stood out to me is the word recycle. Recycle was in the provision with reuse, repair, refill. And some countries did not look at recycle as equaling those other words. They looked at recycle as the solution and should be part of waste management in provision nine. So um, different thoughts, different ways of thinking in terms of who these countries are representing and how their country's infrastructure is set up and how they look at things. So a lot of times I think it's coming together on what is the definition of these words and once you have that basis, then you can really move forward to some of the, you know, regulations, some of the policy that should be in place related to it. Yeah. I, I mean, <laughs> I'm sure it's an incredibly in the weeds and incredibly monotonous as well as a pretty thankless job, but uh, crafting, you know, long form international policy like this, I can't imagine is, is easy either. Um, Kristen, I, I am interested, uh, were there any other kind of uh, you know, big things that stood out to you in regards to, I believe, that fishing gear provision that Amy mentioned? Yeah, that, it's an interesting one, um, especially 
you, you know, many countries where there is less infrastructure, but it's, it's really global. Um, you often hear this referred to as ghost gear because you can't always see it and you don't always know like where it's coming from, you know, so these fishing nets, um, and lines just get detached and then they're just out there. Um, so it's a really big problem to be able to, you know, even sometimes visually see them and be able to collect them. Um, you know, but that's also gets into like kind of an infrastructure issue and um, also just working with the that sector and industry um, to think about, you know, maybe alternative materials to not have non-plastic nets um, to think about, you know, is there even at the in the ports and the docks, is there infrastructure set up to collect used nets and gear? Um, Sounds like the police are coming for those people who leave their gear around. <laughs> right. Um, so yeah, there's, it, it's, it's one of many issues, but it, it definitely is an interesting one. Um, and yeah, I guess some other things that stood out to me, um, I, I guess I didn't talk that much about also the different types of government groups that were there. You know, there were sen- you senators from the U S you know, the U S delegation was quite large. There were a lot of different departments there. Um, this of course was hosted in Canada. So environment and climate change, Canada, um, you know, had a good presence. They had a whole room of like sessions going all day long around different efforts. Um, so a lot of it, you know, even though it's a really heavy topic and the negotiations are very complicated, there's a lot of big decisions to be made, but it felt like a lot of times the mood was positive. There was a lot of focus on like what solutions are happening, the good work that different organizations are doing. Um, you know, the some of the elected officials talked about the, uh, the different legislation they're trying to get passed to help with the solution. Um, so that struck me as well. Like it just, it felt like, a, you know, not everybody was aligned on everything, but it, it felt like we're, people were there for the right reasons and we're trying to make progress. Um, so I, I, I felt like it was, you know, positive. We'll see what happens with the treaty at the end of the day. Um, but I, again, I think there's a lot of value in just bringing together all these stakeholders. Yeah, I mean, over the past few years, especially, we've seen a really big push from corporations. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> yeah, over the past few years, we've seen a really big push from corporations and you know government entities to to really start uh, reassessing their role when it comes to the environment. And there's now this this really concerted effort to create policy and enact motions that, uh, you know, that are finally protective of, of the environment. So I've got to imagine that, you know, aside from, you know, when it comes to all the different types of policies that you could be working on, something that could genuinely play a role in helping preserve and even save the world, I've got to imagine that that was a nice thing for people at this uh, meeting, at this session, to kind of keep in the back of their heads. Was that kind of one of your takeaways? Yeah, I think so, because it's, um, you know, it's limited how many people are involved in the actual treaty negotiations and yes. how many people can be in the room. So, but being able to just be there and be part of that, um, yeah, it's definitely... A, it feels like progress is going to be made, you know, just having those conversations and making new connections and figuring out ways to collaborate voluntarily. Uh, you know, I, you know, I, I'm feeling positive in general about it. Yeah. And were there any other takeaways, uh, Amy, for you as well from this, uh, from this session that like you guys can take back to, to Swana now and be like, okay, now that we know this, we can move forward with these ideas or we can prepare for this or, you know, any kind of aha moments? It just, it showed me in that we are part of the solution. And I think oftentimes people just put their recycling out, their trash, maybe their composting, depending upon where you live. And it just gets picked up at the end of the day. And they don't realize the complexity of that issue. Um, they don't realize the complexity of the contamination in terms of mis- mixing up recyclables or the, you know, putting that plastic water bottle into uh, the trash versus the recycling and the adverse effect holistically that that will have eventually on our environment and that we can really play a strong role here. Um, in the countries we represent, we have the strong infrastructure to, you know, 
continue this out and really push towards um, eliminating this plastic pollution. Our members, um, you know, from the public sector, municipalities, so cities, counties, states, they are working with their communities right now, day in and day out, um, to make sure that they know about recycling, they know um, what is out there, sustainability efforts, things along those lines, and we can strengthen that and have that even be a stronger conduit um, to really moving towards this. What was really important and I think that has inspired our community is that SWANA was there and SWANA was part of it and that we don't know how the treaty is going to end, but the voice was heard. Their voice was heard. Even in the small city or counties that we represent, we were able to bring that perspective and that voice into the conversations. And if this happens by this year or if it does get delayed, but if it, whenever it happens, because it's going to happen and it needs to happen, that's where our society is heading, that the voice was heard and how it's going to come down to be implemented and executed, we're going to be there all along the way. And that to me was so important in this and really elevating uh, the organization of SWANA and elevating the profession and the industry. Um, and certainly we just want to continue to be on that forefront that we are a solution just as much as, you know, maybe the brands, the brands are um, on the front end because they're trying to make the, the products to be sustainable and recyclable. We are there as well um, to make sure that we're continuing that life cycle of the products that are being developed. Yeah. And again, the final, uh, the final session is currently scheduled for December in Korea. I know it's quite a bit further than, than Ottawa, but is that something you guys are looking at attending as well? We have spoken about it because uh, certainly uh, we recognize the impact of being part of the conversations and the voice. And mm -hmm. uh, there's, there's nothing that can replace that. So while it is farther away, we have spoken about it. Um, we are seeing, um, you know, right now in the intercessions, right, there's some work going on right now where that is landing, as well as working with um, the ISWA, the International Solid Waste Association, to see uh, where, you know, what they're planning and how we could maybe have an impact there um, in Busan, Korea. Very nice. Well, uh, this is going to be i think a big one when it finally hits and you know they're planning for this new treaty to be very comprehensive I, i'm certainly not an expert on international policy writing but it did surprise me that the document made available to the public was only 69 pages <laughs> uh I, I did i did expect it to be a little bit longer especially considering that it's uh taking into uh, account the entire life cycle of plastic but again uh, I mean, they're they're putting together the document that is needed, and hopefully not try. Hopefully, that's just an indicator that they're not trying to fluff it up with a bunch of unnecessary stuff. I think what I would like to say is, um, if you take a look, Eric, at the UNEP website about this, they use yeah. UNEP.org. Yes, UNEP.org. They use an image of a recycling truck being full of all plastics, and um, you know, when I read that, I'm like, why are we using a recycling truck? A recycling truck is the solution. But the way this is painted, it's like picture this big recycling truck full of all these plastics, right? And why couldn't have another of image be used? You know, think about the plastics that are ending up in, you know, sea life and whales and dolphins and things along those lines. And I want to start to move away from this image of, you know, the recycling truck um, you know, dumping the plastics, we are, we are part of the solution. We are collecting those recyclable materials and our industry is working day in and day out to make sure that we are uh, being able to reuse as much as possible um, within our society. And so I think that that is a really key message going forward and that SWANA and our profession is working to ensure future generations 
have an environment um, that is thriving and sustainable um, and not taken over by uh, whether it's the plastic pollution or other things uh, related to that. Wonderful. Well, uh, again, super, super interesting story that could potentially have some pretty, pretty big impacts on the most used material in this and many other countries. But uh, I want to thank both of you for joining me again today. And uh, again, we just shouted out unep.org, U-E-N-E, I'm sorry, U-N-E-P.org. Is there anywhere online that people can go to kind of see Swana's role uh, in this process? I know, you know, you've got your own website, obviously, but any specific outlets or resources that you'd like to shout out? Yeah, I think we welcome people to visit swana.org. We have a lot of information on there. Uh, Our recent press release, recent news page, which is swana.org slash news, um, has some information about our recent advocacy efforts um, and also, uh, you know, other activities we've been involved with. Um, And we're, you know, always happy to form new connections and collaborate. So if anyone's interested in learning more, we welcome them, um, you know, to contact us. Um, and yeah, happy to, uh, connect with everyone. Awesome. Perfect. Well, I just want to thank my two guests, Amy Burke and Kristen Oldendorf of SWANA one last time for coming on and talking to us about this incredibly important treaty currently in the works from the UN. But I think that's going to do it for us today here at Recyclist. And don't forget, Recyclist is a registered trademark of Diamond Scientific an industry leader in gas analysis, instrumentation, and solutions. Make sure to visit them online at diamondsci.com. That's diamondsci.com. Or call them at 321-223-7500. My name is Eric Provost, and we will see you back next week for another brand new episode of Recyclist. Thank you. 